We need to talk about combo therapy for IBD and not combo therapy as in infliximab plus azathioprine but forward thinking combination of advanced therapies or ACT, advanced combination therapy as it's called. It's Thursday, I'm back from DDW in Edinburgh, it's pouring down with rain, I need to go and get somewhere dry. I'll come back with more updates from DDW very shortly, but on Thursdays we share insights from the IVD clinic and today we've been discussing advanced combination therapy. So coming up, my thoughts on this, don't go away. Okay, advanced combination therapy for inflammatory bowel disease in 2024. There's four things I want to discuss with you. Patient selection, drug combinations, future directions, and data generation. Patient selection now is very different from what we all anticipate it will look like in the future. Now in the clinic, we have mostly patients, typically with Crohn's disease, who are highly refractory, have failed a large number, if not all of available drugs as monotherapy. And now we're seeing if a combination strategy can help patients get better. Now, I think this will evolve a lot, and already it is a bit. We're already looking at more innovative strategies in patients who have failed one or two drugs. And so that's point two, really, as well. Which drugs? Well, we're trying to be pragmatic and sensible and to mix, on the one hand, efficacy, which is what we're looking for, effectiveness in this real-world setting, and safety considerations on the other hand, taking into consideration that all of this is off-label and it requires very close monitoring for both efficacy and safety. So we take all of these decisions with great care in the MDT session and then with, with direct, very careful counselling with our patients on top of what they would get for individual therapies. So it might be at the moment we're going back to take a drug like vedolizumab at a standard or, a, or, or at a, an escalated dosing regime with a faster acting agent like a JAK inhibitor or an anti-TNF or those a JAK inhibitor or an anti-TNF in combination with a P40 or perhaps more commonly now with a P19 therapy. But moving forward, what we really want to be doing is thinking how we can get patients earlier on in the disease course into a deeper remission. And I think this will be a gradual process as we get more data to support this. But already we are starting to think about patients who have failed one or two anti-TNFs and perhaps already ustekinumab with Crohn's disease. They've got a high risk phenotype and we're starting again, I have to add off-label, we're starting maybe vedolizumab or a P19 and we're giving a JAK inhibitor such as upalacitinib for a short blast, maybe 12 weeks for induction. We'll maybe then carry both along at the dose that works or we'll use the, the JAK inhibitor pulsed, um, more like we might have used a steroid in the past, but with a much better effect, both in terms of symptom improvement and also in terms of tissue effect. So we're getting that inflammation properly under control and then looking to another drug to keep things very controlled moving forward. But we really do need more data to support this. At the moment, we are in the realm of case series, particularly in Crohn's disease and personal experience, which is why I'm sharing this here, because I know more and more people are starting to think about these strategies. So what data do we need to generate? Well, at the moment, we have great excitement from the Vega data with Gazelkumab and Golimumab combination in ulcerative colitis. This is really the opposite spectrum from what we're doing at the moment. On the one hand, multi-drug refractory Crohn's disease, and then here with Vega, you have relatively early ulcerative colitis patients, more moderate in severity. Nonetheless, it's a great test population, and what you find out is that the combination of gazelcomab and golimumab is better than monotherapy of either drug. Very excitingly, when you look at the transcriptomics from Vega, you start to see something interesting. You get not just an additive effect, but apparently a synergistic effect with a much enhanced effect of the drug combination on the transcriptional profile 
dampening down the inflammatory pathways. And so we hope that this strategy will bear fruit. Indeed, it's gone forwards now to phase three testing, that gazelkumab, golimumab, P19, anti-TNF combination in both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis with the duet studies. And they've finished recruiting, so we would expect to see the readout from those fairly soon. What else might we expect to see? Well, there is a uh, study from Tequila called Victriva, which is a combination of vedalizumab and upadacitinib um, at induction. And then the upadacitinib later pulsed with escalated vedalizumab if a patient is flaring, or indeed using that strategy in the non-responders to the vedalizumab at the start. And there will be other studies here too. We have a very innovative platform phase two combination study that's just about to start recruiting as well. So these data points, I think, will increasingly give us confidence about what strategies to use. We will need to think about how we match this effectiveness with the cost, particularly if we're thinking about two agents costed together. Will we see that gazelkumab golimumab combination cost twice the amount of one advanced therapy or will we see a cost that allows this in a combined preparation to be competitive with other monotherapy agents i don't know the answer to that perhaps some do and can comment but at the moment we are finding ourselves in a situation where anyway we are using higher doses of drugs in monotherapy with patients for example for weekly ustekinumab at really great expense. And so these strategies can be more cost effective than that. And indeed, we know that if we keep our patients out of hospital, if we keep our patients free from flares, and indeed in deep remission with all the benefits from that, then we can think about the cost effectiveness of such a strategy in a more imaginative way. And so to conclude here, really, patients want us to do more, we want to do more, and the newer agents are giving us more. We are clearly seeing that. We are seeing data that the P19s are superior to P40s. We've seen other head-to-head -head data that have given us hope that our newer therapies are working better. And in the clinic, it is making a difference. But there are still too many people where we aren't making a big enough impact. And most of us believe now that combination therapy, advanced combination therapy, not with infliximab and azathioprine, for example, but with two advanced therapies, that we, or maybe even three advanced therapies, we will start to see something that gets much closer to disease clearance. And then hopefully we can maintain patients with a very um, standard regime, uh, a very um, safe and well-tolerated regime of just one drug, or even a regime that is combination of advanced therapies and dietary and microbial therapies, so we can truly achieve what we are after. Deep remission, normalized quality of life, absence of disability, ideally complete disease clearance, and something that starts to feel a bit closer to cure. So I'm dry now. I got my run in. That's great. I'm going to go and get some food. Please do keep watching and sharing your ideas and thoughts and comments and feedback. Do subscribe if you haven't already. It does make a difference to what I'm able to do here for the algorithm to help these video videos become more visible. Look out in the coming days for deeper dives from DDW updates. But Thursday is Insights from the Clinic Day, and today it was Advanced Combination Therapy. Thanks. Bye for now.